Giants, demons, aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot, Dogman, fill in the blank. We got the one man that can answer the question, are they real? Should we be concerned? Spoiler alert, they're real. And we have none other from the Confessionals podcast, the man, the myth, the legend, Tony Merkel on The Big Picture. Let's go. All right, all right. You are on the big picture. If you're not smashed that like button, smash it now. Like what we love to say around here, smash it, smash it, smash it. If you're on Rumble, smash it. If you're on YouTube, smash it. Just smash it. But remember, smash it one time. This ain't Facebook. Because if you smash it a second time, you unsmashed it. So just subscribe to the channel. Help us grow the big picture family. I mean, we got people watching from all over the world tonight, live and on the replay. We love you, love you, love you. Without further ado, let us bring in. As I've already told, I've already said, I'm going to say it again. He is a man. He is a myth. And he is a legend. He is the man himself, Tony Burke. The crowd is going wild. They love you. That's all the Tony fan base. Did you know you had a fan club? That, that's no, fan. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, uh, when you're saying, I was like, wait, who's he talking about? <laughs> who, who is he talking about? Like, <laughs> answers. <laughs> Uh, hey, you know, you know who would be the president of the Tony Merkel fan club? My wife. <laughs> My wife loves your show. She loves the confessionals. She has watched so many. I mean, I'll come in the living room, and the confessionals is always on the on the screen. That's the TV. Awesome. We we love your show, man. We love what you're doing. And um, the second time I've had you on our show, and when, first time, man, people just said you got to have him back. He is the real deal. Everybody loved you, Tony. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll we'll get into the deep stuff, but. Uh, Real quick, welcome to the big picture, and uh, uh, give us like the cliff note version of what is going on with the confessionals right now, and have you got any new movies coming, anything like that before we get into the questions? What is going on? Shoot, man, quick. All right, here we go. Uh, the confessionals, we talk to people about their experiences. We explore the unexplainable. Uh, we talk to for people who have had first encounters with bizarre things that theoretically shouldn't exist and mm. we talk to people who have a lot of opinions about things who that sh theoretically shouldn't exist and um you know we we really just try to explore the topics in an open conversation format and uh tick people off along the way <laughs> and so yes uh it it is what it is but um we have uh so i former truck driver started a podcast i was summoned by god to do it uh that story's been out there for a while but um yeah i mean it like literally god told me i was going to start the podcast and then um he told me who i was going to work with mm. to start things off and i didn't know that person and then a month later that person's calling me on wow. my phone and so um i i started this thing out as a trucker and then it it grew and i was able to actually turn it into my full-time job and uh as an entrepreneurial person at heart i figured why stop there let's just keep it going yes. and uh i started merkel media and we do documentaries uh we have two documentaries out right now exhibition dog man where we went to the daniel boone national forest in kentucky hunting the upright walking dog oh, known man. as the dog man uh we also went to uh we did the shape of shadows which is out near skinwalker love Ranch. it love it yeah love it. yes and uh we have a third documentary coming out in april uh and that's gonna be called sasquatch and the missing man we went out to my wow. the guy who i was telling you god told me i was gonna work with uh we became best friends mm -hmm. and uh he had a very dramatic uh bigfoot encounter uh, multiple bigfoot uh probably about 12 years ago now and so we went out to the location ground zero where that happened and we did a documentary out there we stumbled across a missing person case that the person is still missing to this day oh my goodness and um so that, that that's where that documentary is going and then later this year uh probably late summer we're releasing our first movie it's not a documentary there's actors actresses mm. um and we shot that in colorado last year and wow. it's basic it's called the sasquologist and it's about a uh biologist who uh, used to be tenured professor and he turned a uh, bigfoot researcher uh, he and he, the, the people know about the classic um, Bigfoot video from back in the sixties called Patterson Gimlin film. Uh, he, it, the storyline is that he is tracking the offspring of that Bigfoot and they migrated to the Colorado Rockies and there's a specific Bigfoot he's been tracking. Mm. And uh, it's about him 
coming to understanding what Bigfoot is and the journey going from science to there's more to it than than what I thought. And wow. the characters that pop up along the way, you get a little emotional. You laugh a lot. Um, mm. It has it, it 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 definitely puts a stamp on as what me and my team at Merkle Media stand for. There's wow. underlying messages yeah. uh, of it, it, nothing's outright, but I would say that there's definitely underlying messages of Christ in it. Just told my wife before I came in the studio, I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to lean into being who I am in Christ and I'm yes. going to lean into who what he's called me to do. And um, to be honest with you, uh, it is not fun to be the target boy of everything right. uh, out there. And I go through a lot of target practice for people yep. and uh, it's not fun. So if me leaning into Christ and following through on what he's commissioned me to do actually hurts the show and everything I do and gets me canceled. Mm -hmm. I'll live happily ever after in a trailer down by the river with my family <laughs> in peace. Down, in and a so trailer down by the river. <laughs> when you're living in a van down by the river. I I, I just I, I'm like, you know what? Either way it's, it's a win-win. Awesome. Either I'm successful yeah. by leaning into yeah. what Christ has commissioned me awesome. to do or I'm not successful and I'm left alone. And that's yeah. equally great. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, let, let yeah. me just say before we delve into the, the subject of the day, uh, as your friend and as your co-labor with the Lord, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of Thank you. you. I'm proud of your stand because a lot of people would not take the stand that you take. Well, let's let's do that. Let's uh, let's go there. All right. So, so those that you know now, you know a little bit. If you're if you didn't know about Tony and the Confessionals podcast, and all of that will be linked down in the description below. Where you can just real quick just go right to his website, and we'll talk more about that as we get into the program. But you heard him. You heard from his own mouth. He said, I'm not going to back up in who I am in the Lord. Well, the great thing about the, the genre that you have and of your show and your stance with Christ and with the Word of God is that it's biblically based. You know, I've been on your show. We've talked about it. These things that we're talking about are in the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is real. In fact, can I just say this without getting into a lot? Because I get a lot of pushback, too. I get in trouble with preachers, too, because they, they want me to just stay behind the pulpit, microphone in my hand, preach on Sunday morning. <laughs> they don't want me dealing with all this stuff here because yeah. I'm exposing a lot of things they don't want me to talk about. But the truth is the spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. You can't believe necessarily what you can with your senses to be fact. There's that's why we call the show the big picture, is because there's so much more going on all around us right now. I always give the illustration that we're sitting in this room where I'm at in my studio and your studio as well, there are waves and there are signals all around us that we can't see. They're going through our body, they're all in this room. You just gotta have the right receiver to grab that signal and then they can play that sound. Mm -hmm. But they're there, they're here. So if we understand that and know that in the in the physical realm. Then we also know in the spirit realm there are angels, there are warring angels, there's demonic entities, there's all kinds of things going on. Yeah. One of the most fascinating subjects in Scripture, and in my opinion, all, all of what you talk about in the confessionals, what we talk about in the big picture, when it comes to the paranormal, supernatural, can be traced back to the Bible. And, and one, of the, one of the big ones that everybody goes back to is Genesis chapter 6. You know, mm -hmm. when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Well, all of that is to set up this question. I want to talk a little bit about and pick your brain on the subject of the Nephilim. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all new to me. I, I, I'd like to know what they are or what it yeah, is. Well, right? well uh, that's what, not what good. is a Nephilim? <laughs> that's not good because my next question was Tony Merkel, what is the Nephilim? Because here's here's why you're, you're the person to ask, because First of all, you have your own opinion from your own study, but yeah. you have been exposed to so many people who have opinions on this. So what is the confessional podcast, Tony Merkel universe, giving us a definition of who are the Nephilim? That's my first question. Second question is, uh, are there still Nephilim today? Mm. Well, I, I, um, I, let me say it this way first. I come from the perspective that I'm not a genius. And I think most of the world would agree. <laughs> and I, 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 the way I look at things, first of all, I don't take myself too serious. I'm okay being wrong uh, on most things. And 
I look at things that are hotly debated in the Christian world and and theologians who cannot agree if we're chosen or not not chosen, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, very smart people that have very different opinions. And I respect their intelligence on both sides. So um, I, I'm that kind of guy. So whenever I come across these topics and I'm looking at them and I start formulating my opinion, I assume that there's other people out there that think differently and uh, they probably have really good reasons for that. So everything that I think is based off of what I've looked at and, uh, and also what I have heard. Um, my show, anybody who has, is not familiar with my show, I've been doing this for seven years. I have over 630 episodes. I come out with two episodes a week. I never miss a week. I never miss a time. And so if you think about it, like I've talked to so many people just publicly, imagine how many people I talked to that I, I, I never got on the air, whether they don't want to, like I was just telling you, you and I recorded for my show that will be airing a few weeks after this. Um, I was talking to a journalist in Switzerland who uh, just, mm -hmm. you know, disappeared on me. It just happens, right? But um, through my conversations with people, you start formulating uh, thoughts and opinions. And the Nephilim, you can look at in Genesis 6, 4, uh, and the, the uh, incident that happened there. Um, and, you know, there's people that debate whether that it was actually um, fallen angels that came and had sex with women. I do come from that perspective. Uh, others say that the sons of God were actually human beings uh, from, you know, I, I guess the, the line of Seth. And um, from my perspective, the fallen angels came, they fell, and they found the, the human women beautiful, and they took them as wives. And this is not a, I don't, I, for, here's, a, here's, this is a great example. For a long time, I thought that they said, hey, she's hot, and I'm going to take her as my bride, whether she likes it or not. I am going to, and, and I just in my head thought there's probably a lot of going on. And um, I don't even know if I can say that word on, on YouTube. I'm sorry if I, <laughs> there's a lot of the R word going on. Yes. yes. Uh, but um, I just did a, a recording that hasn't aired yet with a friend of mine who did a whole Lilith episode with me. Mm. And he has traced Lilith back to one of the women who willingly turned herself over to the fallen angels and willingly procreated with fallen angels. What? And yeah, yeah. So when we talk about Lilith and, and the, wow. the, 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 the demon Lilith, there's a whole thing, a whole thing that we don't have it, just in scripture alone the information on uh, that when you start researching and digging into this stuff and who Lilith was and why, why is she still popping up today? Uh, there's a real reason for that. And it, it turns out that she uh, did something that was extremely forbidden uh, and she wasn't alone. There were several women that did this. Um, and so from the offspring though, so you have a willing, let's just say most, let's just say some were willing. Let's just say some women were willing. You have a willing woman and a fallen angel coming together and they're procreating. That procreation is known as the Nephilim. They're hybrid human beings that uh, grew very large, giants. Uh, when we talk about David and Goliath, we're taught that you know Goliath was a giant. And it's like, wow, imagine seeing a giant. Back then, it wasn't imagine seeing a giant. It was, yeah, giants. And yeah. we don't like them for a reason because they're, they're, they're not of God. Um, I believe that Goliath was a Nephilim. Yes. And there was not just him. He had a whole family that were yes. giants. And like this yes. wasn't just what like you look at the people today and you're like, oh man, that guy, like Yao Ming, you know? Yeah, I, I think Yao Ming. Let's just say Yao Ming, because I'm pretty sure it is. Yao Ming is seven six. Right. But his parents were not seven six. They 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 were taller, but they weren't like he's an anomaly. Okay. Right. And, and even for, for Asian people, they typically don't get that tall, mm. especially, especially seven, six. And so he's an anomaly. But what we're talking about is these people were not anomalies. They were intentionally created that way. Wow. And uh, they, they existed before the flood because in Genesis 6, it says that this happened and then the flood happened. Uh, but what we see throughout all of scripture after the flood is that these giants were popping up. Goliath. Mm -hmm. In Numbers 13, 33, it talks about the giants. And when you start talking to people, somebody you should 
reach out to to talk to uh, is a, a guy named Gary Wayne. Um, okay. He wrote a he wrote a book called The Genesis Six Conspiracy, and it sounds sacrilegious mm. at first, but it's yeah. not. It, it's it's his. He he wrote a one book. He just came out the second one, and he he has spent his entire life studying the different tribes of Nephilim that are actually in the Bible, and he's traced lineages. Uh, his first book is 800 pages and he had to whittle off 400 pages for the publisher to say okay we'll publish it like wow. the guy is a wealth of information and um and he and he can tell you so much hmm. uh about the the technical nuances of this uh but the the reality is the nephilim are are not of god they are offspring that happen from fallen angels having sex with women yeah and are they still here today I believe so. Okay. I believe so. And, well, then and, that, okay, so I'm going to interrupt you and want you to continue that thought, but I know you're answering my question, are they still here today? Mixed in with that question, Tony, I understand the pre-flood Nephilim. That's very clear in Scripture. And, and for so long, if you even dared believe in the Nephilim in the church, you believed yeah. that that was one of the purposes of the flood that the, many people believe that demons are the disembodied spirits of the dead Nephilim. So you may not have an answer to this, and it's okay if the answer is I don't know. But here's my question. How did they come back? Did we have, because we see the Goliaths that you're talking about, and it seems like they're not, they were, from what you hear people talk about, maybe like the guests you were talking about, they, they may not have been, been as big as they were pre-flood, but in your guess your study and all this finish the thought on are they still here today and then part of that is how did they come back if they were all killed during the flood because we don't have another biblical record that i know of of that genesis 6 sons of god daughters of men happening again that's at least recorded in the canonized scripture yeah, so uh, had they come back uh, I, I guess that would lead into yes they're still here today uh, and it's, I think there's a lot of, um, there's definitely a lot of speculation. And my, my answer to this derives from my experiences talking with people. Okay. Um, but let, let's just, I guess, maybe establish the, 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 the baseline here. Um, and I'm looking at some things I just pulled up here as you were asking that. So I, I mentioned numbers 1333. And uh, there are people who, when they read it, they um they come to the conclusion that that was uh, a facade it really wasn't uh giants it was just this this made up thing um and that giants didn't exist after the flood but there are other things like goliath that you can't get around yeah um and then you could say okay well goliath was a one-off well you can't say that either because goliath literally had a family of giants it talks about it it talks yes. about david having to war with goliath's family yes. like and 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 this is just this is just a, a a thought. Not there's nothing to back it up. But there were four other family members of, of Goliath there the day the Goliath died. Mm -hmm. David picked up five smooth 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 stones. Yep. Uh, could it be that he was anticipating the ch the chance that maybe he'd be doing more than one giant that day? I think uh, so. I mean, it, we we see in the story that he spoke of utmost confidence. He's like, I can't wear this crap you're wearing me mm -hmm. or giving me. I'm just gonna go out there and do what you guys are cowards to do. Like I'm a kid, but I I, I know God's God's gonna God, yes. God's got me. And um and so if he had that kind of faith, he's like, I got one for you, and I got one for you. And Come you, on, and you and you. And uh, I mean, we're gonna take care take care of the big guy here. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it again. And um and I I think that's the kind of swagger that he walked with. Uh, and, and you see that throughout the scripture yes. as he gets older and stuff, he did have that kind of swag. Yes. He um, did. so in, uh, in Sa second Samuel 21, 18, uh, I'm not even going to bother reading this because to this, I, I'm familiar with the passage, but to this day, I can't pronounce these names. Uh, but <laughs> it, 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 it talks about, um, so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so, and it says who was one of the, the, the descendants of the giants. Hmm descendants of the giants this isn't like descendant of um you know uh david or anything like that. this is descendant of giants it's referring 
to there being not just a one-off kind of situation, but it's referring to a group of things that yes. exist and that they were an offspring of that. Well, how did they become an offspring of that when everything was supposed to be wiped away in the flood? Right. So right. people that talk about, you know, there's, I've heard stories that there was a, there was a giant hanging on to the ark the whole time. Yeah. I heard that there's been, you know, there was D, D, uh, Noah's wife was, um, yeah, yeah that's, had I've DNA. heard. I've heard that Noah, yeah. Noah himself had Nephilim DNA in him, uh, and that that um, that he was a, a, a good D, a, a good Nephilim. Which, by the way, there's an interesting argument there that maybe, maybe just because the Nephilim, there was a Neph that because you listen. All right, so I, let me use it as um, not nah, this bad example. Never mind, I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> maybe, awesome. maybe uh, you're born a Nephilim. But you, uh, you're like, you know what? I see their point, and I kind of, I kind of, I kind of on their side on this one. You know, like maybe I'm just saying, like right. if there's free will involved, could there be some nephilim out there that were like, yeah, you know what? My mom and dad were jacked up. That was messed up. I'm sorry, my parents did that. <laughs> like I'm just saying. And so, is it possible? I don't know. But are we, um, are we breaking news that you're, you're <laughs> saying that we might even see nephilim in heaven? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 well, no. no I don't think no, so. No, but no, I, I, but no, shoot, no. dude, could there yeah. be nephilim that they're like, you know what? I'm yeah. on their side. Let me co let me go on their side and be the giant on their on their team. I don't know, but um, here's what I think, and this is just going to get really weird for people. I think um, you have fallen angels who are supernatural beings, and they are mixing with natural beings, human beings, uh, physical beings who do not have transcendent abilities. At least now, I I think that that might have been different before center sin cursed us um we literally did walk with god and that should mean something because like god had to protect moses from his presence so he wouldn't kill him so at some point we we, we were literally different that we could actually exist next to god mm. uh and something happened that mm, took that away good. from us so um we have supernatural beings procreating with natural beings the offspring is a hybrid so with that, we also know in the um, commentary, Enoch, because that's what it is. Let's just yeah, leave it right. at that. I mean, people want to argue yeah. that it should be in the Bible and the Ethiopian no, Bible. No. That's great. But uh, we do know that the authors of the Bible did read it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, in there, it talks about how uh, they taught human beings how to do certain things. Right. If that's the case, then... I mean, I'm a father. I'll, my my son comes in here, and he he. It's normal to him, but he talks about how you know he's going to work for me one day, you know, and he's gonna he's gonna make podcasts with daddy, and he's gonna do this, that, and the other, and that's cool. If if he wants to do it, fine. But I'll teach him how to do it. Mm. And so, in that same philosophy, would it be a stretch? Actually, I personally think it's a stretch to go the other way. I think it would be a stretch to say that the, the fallen angels wouldn't teach their offspring how to do certain things, especially being hybrids and knowing that they can teach them and they have a natural proclivity to be able to do it because they have their DNA in them, their, their, their abilities. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that there's a strong possibility that just as angels can transcend realms, that their offspring, maybe not all of them, but some of them probably could do the same thing. And that I know it sounds crazy, but um, when you ask me how did the Nephilim survive the flood, the baseline is they did. So, and that's from scripture. So, where do we go with that when we also see Noah and that situation? Yeah. If everything was des destroyed in the flood here in this natural world, is it possible that they transcended realms through uh, their abilities to open up portals? I, yeah, I think that's yeah. a very real possibility. I think it's a very real possibility. And, and your bottom line is you can't dispute Scripture. We Not only do we have Goliath, we have, the, in my opinion, the even greater evidence than Goliath and, and King Og and all the others that are there is Jericho. Because when the spies went in, they came back. When you read the actual literal interpretation of the Hebrew, 
it, it gives no uh, inclination that they, it was a type and shadow in their mind, that it was a mental inferiority, that their military was so superior that we're like grasshoppers to them, where they would stomp us out militarily. No, when you start seeing all the ites, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, all of those were believed to be descendants of Nephilim and giants. So more than likely, inside Jericho was giants. Whether they were all, I mean, obviously we know we know of Rahab and others that were there. So there were the Jericho people that were being probably ran by these giants. But we had just like the same spirit that was on David was on Joshua and Caleb. They came back and saw the same giants and said, let's go today. We can take them today because they were looking through the eyes of the spirit realm. They were not intimidated by the Nephilim. So, so yeah, I don't think that we could conclusively say how they came back after the flood because we know how they came about before the flood because it tells us emphatically in Genesis 6. So we don't have reference of how that happened. We just know that something happened. Now, I've studied quite a few, and probably several of your guests you've had on, and I may be mispronouncing it, but many people believe that the Nephilim was pre-flood and the Rephaim, am I saying that right, Rephaim, uh, it was another race of giants that was post-flood, uh, where they said the ones, some, some people believe that before the flood, they were some of those giants were 20 feet tall or 30 feet tall. Taller, taller. Taller, taller, even taller than that. I mean, like in the stories of, of lore, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, Enoch and others said that there wasn't enough food, so they began to consume human beings. But it is believed that post-flood, this Rephiam, if I'm saying that correct, was a race of giants that was 9, 10, 12 uh, feet tall, never made it to the size of the pre-flood. All that speculation, have you heard that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think that's your 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 uh, southern way of saying Raphael. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's uh, it. But, uh, <laughs> I, I have heard that. I have heard that. And, um, I mean, that would kind of go... So there's, a, there's another... Um, idea out there. I've even heard that they went off earth, that they had technology and they actually mm. went off earth and waited it out and then came back. Mm. Uh, but but um, that, I think that kind of that, that whole uh, idea and line of thinking goes into uh, if it happened once, it happens again. And, and that, that was yeah. the case that, that God sent the flood, wiped out the, like the, the problem, like it was a problem yeah. and, uh, and start new knowing that it was going to happen again but uh it was going to give time to build that up and maybe like i don't understand science as far as genes go and stuff but maybe there was an understanding that the second wave would not be as serious as the mm. first wave as far as stature goes um just kind of like you know the the whole idea of uh copying the dna of a human being it, it, it's like a photocopy kind of gets worse and worse as it goes on mm, um true. and so maybe that that there is something there to that uh which I don't, I mean, my simplistic mind says, I, I don't understand why that would be an impossibility. I mean, do, do the fallen angels still exist post flood? Yeah. Yes. Uh, do humans? Yeah. So who's to say mm -hmm. it doesn't happen again? Mm, you know, well, look, it, look, it's a different thing. It's not the same thing as what gave birth to the Nephilim, but you know, you're talking about Lilith and some other things like that. Uh, I mean, it's, there are people that say that entities come in their bedroom and they have relations with them. I mean, there's all kinds of people that say, and and they'll. I mean, I'm talking about people that are saved now that got delivered from that will still emphatically say, "I used to have sexual relations with yep. fallen beings." So, yeah, in our finite minds, we cannot figure out how that happens and why angels were designed to be able to do that, or demonic spirits, fallen angels, or whatever. But the reality is this. I mean, I think that I think the you, your answer is just phenomenal. I mean, you're, you've given a biblical perspective. You've given a you've heard these different things, and I've heard the same thing. And look, you're you're right. If let's you said off Earth, they, they, some people believe they went off Earth. Well, what a perfect transition to my next question. My next question was this. I know where you're going. Are aliens Nephilim? Aliens! 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 <laughs> aliens! It's aliens! aliens! It's aliens! They came back to Earth, and we are your gods! 
Aliens? Exactly. I mean, no, I'm I, not saying it's aliens, <laughs> but it's aliens. That's what the guy always said. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, so, okay. So there's there's the question I get on my show. My show uh, is nowhere near like the confessionals, but I get, are aliens real? What about aliens? Are the Nephilim aliens? Are are they all one and the same? Are they all demons taking on different types of bodies? Bigfoot here, Dogman here, Alien here. You know this. Uh, uh, what? So so do you, if if you do believe that aliens are something, okay. And then I got other questions on that after that. But if they are something, if they really are seeing something that is what we would call an alien, is that a morphing of the Nephilim? Is if if they are one in the same, it does sort of make sense that they may have had technology to sort of go off the earth and come back. I don't know. I'm not adding or taking away from the word of God. Listen to me, Lord. I'm not. But uh, so okay, I ask you, what are Nephilim? What are aliens? Yeah. So I mean, first of all, like you, you God gave us a brain to think, you know, and so He wants us to think about things. And He listen. Uh, God's no strong a stranger to either one of us or anybody listening being wrong in our own lives. Like right. he, like he, he's seen it, you know, and that's why <laughs> I, um, this is probably the, the, the Calvinist type side of me. Cause I'm kind of like a hybrid theological. I, I was raised Pentecostal. Um, I ruined with a bunch of Calvinists in college. So like, <laughs> like but, um, I, I do, um, really enjoy, not uh, enjoys the wrong word. I really do, um, appreciate and deep, deeply uh, love the fact of what happened on the cross that it offers the grace that I need for my stupidity. Mm. And, um, and I, I trust that when I misstep, especially when I'm misstepping and I don't know it, uh, that God's grace is sufficient in that. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so I, I do, and it's not me abusing it because I, I strive to be like Christ. Uh, knowing I'm going to fall short, and those those moments that I'm falling short, that's when I'm like, "Thank God for Jesus," because come like, on, come you know, on. Without that, there's not enough goats for sacrifices. Uh, so, um, I, it's, I'm sorry, you went off there. Um, what was your question? Oh, alien, alien. <laughs> what are aliens? Yeah. Aliens, yeah, aliens, yeah. aliens. So, this is a question that has been part of an evolutionary process with me and my thought process on it. When I started my podcast, I didn't really even think about aliens. I didn't think about UFOs. It really wasn't something I was that interested in. Um, I was when I first started my show, I had I was interested in Bigfoot. I thought the idea of an upright walking dog was ridiculous because I looked at Bigfoot as a primate that we couldn't keep up with. And it was completely natural and human or not human, but wow. natural and and physical and we just for whatever reason we can't figure it out just like the uh, silverback gorilla we didn't discover till 100 years ago just like that we'll discover bigfoot one day and i'm on a mission mm. to do it um i've come very very too much to the other side on that and the same thing with uh with aliens i went from thinking it's not possible that there could be anything in outer space that lives outside of us to being to saying who am I to say what God can do and what God can't do? And if God saw it in whatever wisdom and, and, and thought process that he had, that he wanted to create another being, not saying it's human, uh, that has any kind of intelligence somewhere else in the universe that he created, who am I to say that he can't do it? And uh, on top of that, uh, people would always say uh, to that, they'd be like, well, then they, they, what, did Jesus die for them too? No, because they're not human beings. Right. Um, and... Uh, now I'm at the point where I don't divorce myself from that opinion totally um, because I do think that there is something to say that I think we tend to sometimes put ourselves into the center of the universe uh, more so than we even put Christ as the center of the universe. Mm. And um, and it, it's, it's about Christ, not us. Right. And uh, if we put ourselves on the outside of that center and we, and we look at Christ and we're like, you are the center of the universe and we're a spoke in that wheel. Well, then we could look to our left and right. Be like, are there any other spokes on this wheel? You mm -hmm. know, so, like I just I'm just saying, but um, I lean more towards through conversations with people and their experiences. It seems like these things are very much interdimensional. Uh, that, that's where I was going. I was going definitely. I was going I was going to ask you. Uh, do you lean towards instead of interplanetary, interdimensional? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, is that where you're where you fall? Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglan.com and make a one-time gift, or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store. Connect with us on our social media links and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I think that most of the cases, uh, if I had to say, were more interdimensional. Uh, the way they, they go about things have interdimensional property, properties, uh, such as mind speaking. Like if you're hearing these things communicate with you in your mind, uh, there is some kind of pretend say that they are from outer space. There's still in that action an interdimensional action taking place. That's not physical. It's 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 transcending this. It's metaphysical. Yeah. And uh, and so you see people talk about how these things go through walls. Uh, they just appear and disappear. They levitate you out of the body people out like i mean out of the body not levitate your body out of the room they do do that but i i literally just had a guy sitting in the studio over here with me a few weeks ago who said that he was having a dream uh and people say dream because they have no way to describe it but the common description is it was more real than this reality they're having a mm. lucid dream they're having an out of body experience and when they're in when they're in this other experience uh, it, it's a it's a new reality. It's a new feeling of existence that is not familiar, and it feels more real than what this reality feels like. I've never had the experience, but this is a common description. So he's having this happen to him, and he's calling it a dream because he has doesn't doesn't have the vocabulary for it. I don't have the, the vocabulary for it. He says that he opens his eyes and he's looking at his ceiling. He's floating up at his ceiling, mm. and he looks down. And he sees his body beneath him and then he looks out the window in his room now he's in this like astral body at this point he doesn't realize it but he looks out the window there's not a demon standing there there's not a bigfoot standing there there's a gray alien standing there and that's a common experience that people have they have these different crazy wild experiences and all of a sudden it, to me it used to be like a, a, a out of left field kind of thing like they're saying this experience like wow this is wow this is wow and they're like and then i saw an alien and i'm like mm. Mm. where'd the alien come from like what like what? And, and then I, you start connecting these dots and you're like oh and then you have these whistleblowers coming out uh like david grush saying things that mm -hmm. he's not like I, I i really forget how he says it but he didn't say that they're they're interdimensional he said something like they're already here yeah but they're not here and i'm like so you're saying it's interdimensional yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, without saying those words you just said it <laughs> yeah well well okay so so listen i got to ask you this question because there's nobody better to ask this question to than you because i have heard several people say on the believer side when it came to alien encounters that in every instance that it ever happened, if they ever utter the name Jesus, the aliens leave. Have, mm -hmm. Number one, have you ever heard that? And number two, I've been told that, not saying this not ever happened, but these people that have interviewed people with encounters, probably not on the level as you, have said as far as they know, no spirit field on fire solid Christian on fire, spirit filled, not just churchgoer, has ever been abducted and ever had on record that kind of intense account. Have you ever heard the spiritual side of that, that in the name of Jesus go, that the aliens didn't go? And have you ever heard it said that on fire, committed spirit filled Christians have never really had an abduction or an encounter? Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I have heard of it. Uh, I talked to a guy named Joseph Jordan and he runs a, I think it's an organization called CE4. You, everybody's heard of CE5, which I don't recommend. Uh, okay. but talk about summoning demons, uh, shout out to pastor Alan DiDio. Um, yes, summoning yes, the yes. demon is a new book. Uh, yes. but 
Um, yeah, so Joseph Jordan is a Christian. Uh, and I think if I remember the timeline correctly, he got involved with MUFON before he was a Christian. Uh, and he becomes a Christian and he starts finding this, this thing where people are saying that uh, he's talking to, to experiencers, a UFO experiencer in the middle of abduction. And the uh, abduction experience stopped when they cried out the name of Jesus to come and save them. And when I talked to him, this is years ago when I talked to him, he said he had 200 documented cases where this was the situation. And if I remember correctly, he said every time he talked to somebody who said that they did that, it worked every wow. time. Wow. And I remember him telling me that he he actually um, uh, he had more cases. And then recently, I don't know if it was on my show that somebody was talking to me or somebody, I heard somebody bring him up, but um, I heard the number 700 come out. So I think he's up to like 700 cases now, him personally. And he and he's not just a, oh, I volunteer, I, I signed the form online and now I'm part of MUFON. I got my sticker in the mail. Like he's actually a recognized person in MUFON uh, that is an investigator. Like he's like a real, real. For those, for those that don't know, ex ex explain to the listeners what MUFON is. Mutual UFO Network. I think it is. Okay. Uh, okay. I, 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 and okay. it's just basically okay. a research. It's a research uh, network okay. for UFOs. But, and stuff. but you're saying in his in instance, every every documented up to 700 now, the yeah. name of Jesus makes them go or stops the abduction. Every, every, every time, at least when I talked to him when it was in the 200s, every time somebody told him they cried out to Jesus, that stopped it. Does that um, does that immediately make you think what? It, makes me think that if that's yeah. the case, no matter planetary, interplanetary, interdimensional, whatever, it has to be from the demonic realm, from, from at least the realm of the fallen angels, realm of the enemy of God, because, you know, if there is no Jesus, number one, if there is no God and then Jesus is not the real way, then why are they responding that way unanimously? Mm -hmm. And see, what you're doing is just confirming, because I've been told that by so many people that they've talked to people who are, are in that world, and emphatically, it is 100%. That it is like, it stops it. So it's like, you read these stories of these horrible abductions, these experiments being done on people, things being put in their bodies and all of this. But then you, on the flip side here, that if you know Jesus, they can't do that. So it's like, that, does that not just sort of solidify to you personally? I'm asking you, I'm not pushing that on you. Does that make you think that, you know, this whole paranormal realm is a way of trying to intimidate our faith in God? It's, it's, um, as human beings, uh, the more you look at the paranormal realm, uh, I believe if you look at it on, if I look at it honestly as a Christian, uh, the more I look at it, the more it should open my eyes up to the fact that it's a supernatural realm. Yes. And we, we don't view the world through supernatural lenses anymore, but the, the, the fathers of our faith, the biblical times, so those who writ the, wrote the canon, they did very much. And if we start looking at the world the way they looked at it, I don't think things are going to catch us off surprise as much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the, the, the question well, you had well, there. Well, well, let me just veer this way. So what you just said is where I was going to ask you anyway, and it still pertains to what we were talking about. It's amazing to me that along the journey, you've been doing this, your podcast now seven years. Yeah. So seven years, instead of seeing more and more strange things, hearing more and more unbelievable stories, from believers and um, many unbelievers, uh, instead of it driving you away from your relationship with God, it's, driv it's driven you further in your relationship with God, driven you more of a believer in the gospel and of Jesus. How in the world did that happen? Because most people would look at that and say, well, sh wouldn't that make you question your faith, Tony? Tony, how is hearing about Bigfoot and, and Dogman and, and just multiple, multiple things that you've seen and heard solidified your faith. So, um, all right. So listen, my show is about stories. So I tend to relate and answer people's, uh, 
questions towards me in story format. Uh, so I will tell you that this all started before I started the podcast. Um, I, I was a truck driver and I wound up talking to a guy who, um, long story short, he was a Satanist and I didn't know it at the time. And, uh, at one point during our conversations at his place of employment, when I was delivering, he said that he was going to kill himself. And I told him that he didn't want to do that. God had plans for his life. And he, that changed his mood immediately. And he started asking me questions about God. And as a Christian, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about God, especially if you're asking me to, he asked me to come to his house. And I came to his house, uh, that following Saturday. And, uh, it turns out he lured me to the house and, um, he, really put me through the ringer spiritually for three hours. Um, uh, I, I had a lot of uh, demon, demonic oppression happening there. I believe that he was trying to, to ha get me possessed by the de uh, demonic uh, forces. Uh, I was very ignorant to the whole thing. I didn't understand it. I, st I still wouldn't say I completely understand things, but I, I way further along than I was then. Uh, this was all new to me. I wasn't in the paranormal world. I, 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 I don't even know if I was seriously looking at Bigfoot back then. Um, so this was like my introduction to it all. And, um, and it didn't scare me away then. It, it, yeah. it, uh, it, it made me uh, lean into things more. It made me uh, think more because from that day, I had some real issues pop up spiritually in my life, and I didn't understand why. I didn't relate it to that experience uh, that I had gone through with the guy at his house. It wasn't until years later that I started thinking there's something there. But the reality is I left that man and I'm listen, talk like I, I had never been higher with Jesus than I was at that point in my life mm. ever. Like, like I was like the, the, my life as a trajectory, I was at the peak of my life at that point. I, I listen, I didn't read the Bible because I had to, I read the Bible because I desperately wanted to know my creator. I woke up in the morning at four o'clock to spend hours reading my Bible because I didn't have kids. I had no other responsibilities outside my wife. And all I wanted to do is understand God more. And that's all I did all the time. I would come home. I'd read my word. I'd go, I'd go to bed, wake up, read my word. I'd listen to sermons all day long in my truck. That's all I cared about. So to go to this guy's house who one, God lead me up to that, that day was telling me I was going to be encountering spiritual warfare, dark spiritual warfare, repeated every day that week. I was being told by the Holy Spirit, and I didn't understand why. I'm like, this guy wants to talk about you, God. Why would I? Why would? Why would that be the case? Hmm. The hmm. idea of a Satanist never crossed my mind. Um, the guy, the guy uh, hugs me three times during this experience, and it's a very bizarre thing. I think it's like episode thirty something. I talk about it. Um, I believe now, years looking back. I believe he was trying to release demons on me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the traditional idea of and this kind of actually circle back to your question about Christians being attacked. Um, the traditional idea is, well, I, I'm with Christ. Nothing can touch me. And I, and I had that. I had that opinion. And ultimately, I believe that I'm, my soul is not going anywhere. Like that mm -hmm. sits in the palm of Christ, Jesus Christ's hand, like, boom, right there. Yeah. It's his. It's his. Yes. I, that's why I don't believe that Satanists can sell their soul. That's not yours to give away. No. That's, you, no. you can give away your loyalty and your allegiance, but your soul itself is not gone, which means that you can be brought back into the kingdom. Yes, yes. It's a lie. It's and a lie. so, so, anyways, um, he he eventually he he's pretending to be, become a Christian. He he prayed with me and he he acted real, real weird. And um, he said to me, I want to tell you something. I'm a member of the Church of Satan. And I'm like, wow. okay. Wow. And he gets up and he gets these satanic books out and he puts them down in front of me. And he's like, I want you to take these out of my house for me. And I'm like, all right, I will. And I, I took them and it's more to the story. I'm really shortening it, but I take it out of the house and I go over to my church and I throw them in the dumpster. Cause I'm like, I'm not taking my house. I don't know what, what that is, you know? Um, but there is something to be said about physical contact and yes. taking possession of something that was his. Yes. And I started waking up in the morning to, to read my word. And I am not feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit whatsoever, wow. Wow. whatsoever. And it's going on for months and months and months. And I'm just like, what is going on? I went, I literally went from feeling like every day I was hearing the Holy Spirit speak to me to void, gone. Like, I'm like, what, where are you? And I, and I, I got to the point where I, I get, I was getting frustrated. I wasn't like, I never walked away from my faith, um, but I, I was getting angry about it. I was like, I, what had happened, man? 
Like what happened? And I remember the one morning I woke up, I sat down defeated and I sat there and I read and I, and I, I never did devotionals. Like I just opened up the word and start reading and let the Holy spirit speak to me. And, um, had always worked for me. And, um, Again, nothing happened. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit speak. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit with me. Nothing. And I, I closed the Bible that morning, and I just, I didn't make a decision, but I knew I wasn't going to be waking up tomorrow morning to do this. And um, that started me off on um, real spiritual warfare in my life. And looking back, and I didn't understand it. Like, I didn't connect the dots. It, had, it all started literally the day after I was at that guy's house. Because in my mind, I was like, this guy is just really weird, but he, he, he accepted Christ. He, re- he prayed with me, and he asked me to take these books out of his house. I didn't understand what was actually happening. Yeah. yeah. Do, you think, and, do you think that what happened to you is what one of the reasons why the church is being forced to deal with these questions and these issues and find answers is because it is really until you are exposed to that realm how do you as a believer really even know what you're fighting, what you're yeah. fighting? And in, in, the, in the time that we have left here, Tony, I think that's where just continue where you're going, but then also understand that there are people watching right now, as you know, that have had encounters. They have, they have dealt with demons. They have dealt with aliens. They have had encounters with things they've seen in the woods that they feel like is lives in there and torments them, comes and goes. And there's tormenting uh, things that happen in, in dreams and visions. And so so what does the listener and the viewer that is facing this realm, how did they face it? What should we be looking for as a believer? Because I believe the closer we get to the return of Christ, the more intensified the battle is going to be. So can you take a a few minutes and just really speak into the big picture, uh, number one, to those that may have dealt with this realm, how that they can get beyond that? Because many, as you know, many feel like they're cursed. They feel like, you know, they're trying to go on with their life, but then these entities come back. How do they stop these entities from coming back? And how do they walk in faith and not in fear in these last days? Stop looking at your life like... There's a start line and a finish line, and there's a, there that it, that you you can fix everything in the middle. You made a decision to follow Christ, and that puts you on in, in a path to have a target on your back. And it's not a matter of what you did, but who you know. What mm. chi- what side what side did you choose? You made a public declaration of who you choose, and so the other team is going to come at you. And so this isn't something that you, that that is like, uh, oh man, you know, uh, if I could just figure out how to listen, you could figure out how to stop a situation maybe, but it doesn't mean it's going to stop totally. Like I, I'm I'm convinced that this could be a lifelong thing for some people. For me, uh, let me use me as an example. Like I that started back then. It hasn't stopped. And how do you how do you deal with it? You lean into it. Mm. Who who do you say that I am? Is he worth following? He didn't say it was going to be easy. He says it's going to be hard. The world's going to hate you. If the world hates you, what do you think the spiritual realm is? They hate you more. They're going to do everything that they can to destroy you. So instead of playing the game of woe is me and and, and poor is me, where does a badge of honor? I got a target on my back because I know who I am. And he knows me. And that's why they hate me. So like, instead of worrying about and I understand it's frustrating. Listen, dude, I like I got I got two little ones at home. Like my my son heard disembodied voices in my house last year. Mm. Why? It's because of who I am right. and who he is. Yes. My son is a Christian, hardcore. Yes. He can't imagine fo- not, not having Jesus in his life. He, it's it's unfathomable to him. He's got a target on his back. Yes. Fortunately, he's being raised by a dad who looks at it very serious and understands, listen, this is part of the process of following Christ. You will be targeted by people in the spiritual realm. It's just the way it is. And I know this isn't probably the answer that people want to hear, but it's just how I feel about it through my own personal experiences and talking with people. Like they, 
you can stop a mo like if there's a spiritual attack happening to you and you stop it with the name of Christ, it's not like they walk away and say, well, we lost that one. Next person, they're going to come back. Yes. They're going to come back. And that's why you got to stay prayed up. Read, read Psalm 91 nightly, every yes. day, stitch it to your heart, memorize it, walk around your house, praying it, walk around your property, praying it. It doesn't mean they're going to stop trying to get you though. Yes. They hate you. All they want is to spend eternity with you in hell. Mm. That's their goal. So if that's their only goal, they're not going to stop. And so I, I just, that this is, I'm, I know I'm getting emotional about it, but it's because you're, you listen, I'm in the middle of it. Right. I'm right now in the middle of it. And people are telling me, cause the world knows like that the story's out there. I can tell you in a second here, but like people hear it and they're like, see, this is what you get. Yeah, this is what I get for following Christ and following through on my convictions. I know who I am. This is why it's happening. Because I'm a threat. Yes. I don't I don't run from it. I embrace it. This is what it is. I'm following Christ and it's not easy physically or spiritually. But I'm good with it. And um and so uh, let me calm down. I I want East Coast no, Philadelphia good. there for a second. I'm sorry. Ooh, come but, on. Um, yes. Uh, that was I, awesome. Um, I started seeing a vein pop and like, calm down. Um, preach on, but, preach on, brother. So the guy that I was telling you about that had the dream that was out of body, right? He's he's a worship leader at a church here in Tennessee. And he came here to the, to my, my studio to talk with me. A lot of weird things happening in his life. The last thing he wanted to share with me is he goes, I, I have something I want to talk to you about, but I don't know how to say it. And I was like, dude, just talk. What What is it? And he goes, I, I had a dream about you. Do you remember me having a dream about you? I text you. And was, he texted me last July. Now, he just told me this like three or four weeks ago here. Mm. But last July, and mind you, three or four weeks ago. So that's why I got hot because it's very much, that what I was talking yeah. about is very much current. Fresh, it's fresh. Um, last July, he texted me and said, I had a dream about you. And I just kind of clowned him about it. I was like, whatever. I didn't even ask him what it was about. I didn't care. And, um, and so he didn't tell me. And I believe it was because it was meant for now. So, um, the week before I had him in studio, I had uh, a guy named pastor Dave Bryan on glad tidings in California. And his story is very fascinating in the sense that, um, he lost his father, who was a pastor. When he lost his father, his pastor's friend, who's a missionary in Chile came to him and said, God told me I'm going to be your spiritual father. Now here's a book. You need to read it. There's spiritual warfare coming in your direction. And so he takes the book, puts it down, doesn't read it for eight years. The guy comes to him eight years later and said, listen, I'm going to be in the States. I'm coming to visit you. I know you haven't read the book. God told me you've been disobedient. It's starting a week from now. And so he, he, he meets with them, talks with them, understands something's happening, doesn't know what. A week later, Anton LaVey's daughter walked into his church mm. and she was running from the church of Satan and he didn't know who she was. And per tradition, his, his family, they take people in. He took this woman in and um, spiritual warfare started coming in. And, and obviously, you know, and so his story is that direction, right? That book, that book is called, um, He Came to Set the Captives Free by yeah, Rebecca Brown. Yeah, yeah. And that book has been coming up on my show over years. And I bought it two years ago. It sat on my nightstand two, for two years. I have not read it. Just like he didn't read it for eight years. I didn't read it for two years. It sat right on my nightstand where I slept. And uh, I told him, I said, it's kind of crazy that you, you, that, that this is kind of your story because I said, I have the same book. I haven't read it for two years. And I've been feeling like the last year or two that God's been preparing for some serious, strong spiritual warfare gearing up towards me. Mm. And um, so I started reading it. A week later, wow. this guy comes to my studio and he says he has this dream about me. And he goes, does the number blah, 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 mean anything to you? And I, and it does. And I looked at my brother who's live producing in the seat right here. And I looked at him and I'm like, yeah, but we can't talk about it on the show. And he goes, oh, okay. And he, he proceeds. And he goes, um, I had a dream that I was standing at the end of your driveway and your house number was blah, 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 blah. And I, and, and it is, that's why I, I, I look at my brother like, <laughs> this dude just said my house number. And um, he goes, your house sat back off the road and it, your driveway cut off of a road that it turns to the left and you kind of cut off uh, off that road and you sit back between two houses back off the road. And he's describing my house to me the color of my house, the way my house is built, the shape of my driveway, everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, what is going on here? You know? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, is this guy a stalker? Like, yeah, I yeah. hope not because 
we got problems and you're yeah. sitting right across from me. And um, he goes, and I don't believe that by the way. Uh, and he goes, uh, and I, I, I told him, I kind of, I kind of got emotional. I told him, I said, this is my house you're describing like literally. And, the, and there's two guys sitting in the studio with me. That's because we were doing some work that day. So there's four guys at the table. The two guys that were in the studio with us, uh, they slept in my house the night before they could vouch everything mm. that this guy was saying. Mm. And, um, and so he continues to say that it was nighttime and he saw me getting out of my truck in my driveway and there was two black cloaked entities standing behind me. He said beings. And he said, I walked behind my house and they followed me behind the house. And I, I, I was sat there and I was taken back because it was the first time in my life I've had be, doing what I do for so long. You have people who come along and say, God told me to tell you. Yeah. And I pay that no mind if God's not telling me first. You're a complete stranger to me. And if God isn't telling me first, I appreciate the concern you have, but I believe that God is going to speak to me. And and if, if he's speaking to, to me, he'll send you his confirmation. Yeah. And this is the first time that I had somebody to do this with me. And I was already feeling like there's spiritual warfare coming. And the week before when I talked to Pastor Dave Bryan, I after I told him that I, I've been feeling God to, you know, preparing me for strong spiritual warfare, I started having this feeling and, and for the first time acknowledging the feeling that I was having. Every time I say that, I started having this doubt in my mind that is there, is it coming or is it me just, you know, doing what I do for a living and I'm overly sensitive to this whole thing and I'm just reading into it too much. And I started really feeling that. And after I said that to Dave, Dave Ryan, I, I was like consciously thinking, yeah, I might be just reading into this too much because I've been feeling like this for like two years and nothing really has happened. And then this guy comes and gives me this confirmation through this dream that he had that he he sees my house and everything. And there's these two black cloaked entities following me into my house. Oh, wow. And and that and that and so like when when you ask the question about Christians uh being targets, yeah. I got emotional because I'm in the middle of that. Yeah. And 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 like I I don't play the victim card. You know, like like I lean into it. Yeah. Like I like this is God like God called me to do this. Like literally God spoke to me in my tractor trailer one day and said, "You're going to start a podcast and you're going to work with Wes Germer from Sasquatch Chronicles." Didn't know the guy at all. And the month later he's calling me. Right there, confirmation. Yeah. So when I know that God called me to do this, yeah. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Then I just know that I'm a target with this thing. Can and, can can you can you lean into that now, Tony, and pray for our people right now that are watching absolutely. this or listening to this? Lean into it because I've got a feeling. I feel it. I still feel it in my spirit, and I know you're feeling it too. That and I'm not trying to hyper spiritualize this. Whether you're watching it live or, or on replay there are people's hearts that are pounding and burning right now because they are connecting with what you're saying. Lean into that. Help them lean into it. Pray over them right now for them to be delivered, for them to be saved. Whatever God puts on your heart, pray for those that are connecting with what you're saying right now. Mm. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to this uh, new, unique audience. And if there are people which there probably are that are identifying with what I'm saying and they feel like they're walking in literally the same shoes that I'm walking in. Lord, give them new eyes to see the situation through what I just shared uh, and to move away from this condition, preconditioned environment that we're trained to think in, which is if something bad happens, I'm a victim and I need to fix it and lean into the fact that something might not be good happening to me because of who I am in you. And that should just be expected that there is spiritual warfare coming. And you said it wasn't going to be easy, but as yes. long as I'm in you, I'm going to be okay. Lord, let them find rest and solace in you yes, and comfort in you yes. and know that no matter what arrows are fired at them, there's nothing that can strip them from the palm of your hand, from Thank the you. palm of your hand and protection. And that no matter what twists and turns might come through their life from the day they're born to the day they're put back in the ground, no matter what twists and turns come throughout that life, if they just stay centered, focused on you, 
It doesn't matter what happens around them. It's called a storm of life for the reason, Lord. And we want to be in that storm of life with you, because if we're not with you, we're dead. We're done. Yes. And so, Lord, I pray that anybody who has that stirring inside of them and anything that I said might have uh, stirred that up, Lord, I pray that they hear the words I'm saying through the attitude that I might have had and just hear the protection that you offer in your name. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I really feel like some people's lives have been changed on this program because people people are going, I, I just I just got to know that in the comment, live chat, comment section, people are going to say, I didn't think I could talk about this. I didn't think that I could eat, that I could be real as a believer knowing I've, I've got secrets. I've, I've dealt with things. I've seen things. I've been in contact with things. How do I deal with that as a believer? So they've just sort of pushed that down and just lived their life and not feeling like they could talk about it. But I think it's, Tony, I believe you have helped so many people to not be afraid to tell the truth, uh, to not be afraid to lean in when they want to be afraid and run uh, and, and that they, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to, I just have this, like, you're, if you, if you are in the middle of the storm, it's not, if, 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 if it's happening to you and the targets are being fired, if you're a target and the arrows are being fired at you, like, you didn't do anything wrong. Mm. It's who you follow. Like, maybe you did something wrong. Let's be honest. I mean, maybe, maybe you're doing something wrong and that's why, but if you're walking with the Lord and you're, and you find yourself in that confusion, it's, it's literally, that's the answer to that's why it. it's happening. Yeah. And, because, and it's not that the you're enemy, doing. The enemy's not going to mess with the ones he's already got. Right. He's not right. going to mess with the ones he's got. He's when I started following Jesus, it all started going on. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. And, 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 and it's, it, it, it's not fun, but we don't live for this life. We live for the next one. Yes. Let it go. Stop worrying about today yeah. and tomorrow and worry about eternity. And how are we going to leave our thumbprint on this realm now and the people around us? Because that's what we're commissioned to do. It's not going to be easy. Listen, yeah. Jesus was tempted. You're going to yeah. be tempted. Jesus went through the ringer. You're going to go through the ringer. You chose your side. Now stick with it. <laughs> uh. Wow. All right. Look, if you want to learn more about uh, this amazing podcast, it is found at the confessional pod, the confessionalspodcast.com. That'll be linked down below. His website is just amazing. There's our lead team, Tony, Lindsay, Jack, the Merkel, uh, three musketeers, tribe. the yeah. tribe. And then, of course, they got so many others that help them. They've got all the merchandise, media, uh, how you can connect with them on social media. And, of course, their podcast and YouTube channel is the center of everything that they're doing. Um, I just want to say one more time, man, this has been one of the most phenomenal programs that we've ever had. And, and I'm telling you, I want Tony Merkel to be a regular on the big picture. Cause I have so many more questions that we did not get to that. You have the unique, uh, life of not only your own interpretations and feelings and believe about things, but you get to talk to so many people from so many walks of life that is opening your eyes, helping you understand things. So, Tony, thank you for saying yes to God. Thank you for saying yes to this call, this very unique mission that God has given you. Uh, it's a very overused uh, biblical reference, almost become cliche-ish in the church, but I truly believe that some people have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, and I believe that you have. And mm -hmm. I know that God called the big picture in, in my in my pop all years when I'm supposed to just be slowing down, enjoying my grandbaby, God said, no, you're going to start a YouTube channel and you're going to show people the big picture. So I'm thankful that God is calling people uh, up in this moment for such a time as this. So parting thoughts before we uh, leave this particular episode and uh, look forward to having you in the future. Any final comments to the big picture family? Um, I love you. And uh, I, I, uh, Hopefully what I had to say came across right, even though I got hype about it. Um, oh, it did. And, and, and I'm not saying you you don't deserve to live in peace in Christ, but to think that you're going to go through your entire life living in Christ with peace uh, and not have it being a target, I, I think that's 
I don't know. Well, well I, let's, I just, listen, we, we'll open up a whole nother can here. And we'll yeah, just, I know. We'll just pray. I know. But here's the reality. He gave us armor for a fight. He gave us yeah. a sword for a fight. Not, none of that armor of God protects the backside. That's, that's, that's great. So let's, let's just say this. You're a soldier. Go fight. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all we got to say. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglin.com and make a one-time gift, or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store. Connect with us on our social media links and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. And I'll close by saying this. Thank you, Big Picture family, for joining us. Thank you for all of our partners. If you have not smashed that like button already, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Smash it, smash it, smash it. If you've not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to become a partner with us, all you have to do is go to our website. Very easy to do. Just go to LarryRaglin.com. I'll show it to you right here. And when you get to the website, you can see our book, I See Greatness in You, the story of Sandy and, our, and our, my life. It's just incredible. Partner with us. You can read our uh, commentary and our, contribu our contributions to the Epic Times, watch our TV ministry, and so much more. All of that is found at LarryRaglin.com. And we got some very, very exciting things that are coming up as well in addition to that. But until next time, share this broadcast, help us build the Big Picture family, and remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. See you next time. God bless.